All right, all right. <clears throat> Looks like we are live on YouTube over here. We are live over here on Instagram. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the PT on Eyes Daily Show. Uh, for today, I'm your host. I'm Dr. Matthew Keister. I'm a physical therapist in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, with ICE, I get to serve alongside Jason London, uh, specifically in our endurance athlete division, which I guess technically makes today an endurance athlete Friday. Uh, with Jason, we teach the professional bike fitting certification. Uh, so in that sense, I'm actually going to talk a lot about that today because that's one of my uh, one of my specialties, one of my hobbies, a lifelong hobby that's actually kind of bled into my practice as one of my favorite ways to uh, to help patients. But before we dive heavy into that topic for today, we got a few things to uh, to jump on and talk about here. First one being the ice sampler. Uh, that one's coming up here next weekend down at CrossFit Hendersonville, just outside of Nashville. Super stoked for that event. That is going to be, it's shaping up to be one of the, the coolest physical therapy events at, by far that I've ever attended, um, including the ones that we've all hosted before. We just released the workouts for that one. And whew, first one on Friday, for those that are going to make it into town, looks spicy. A uh, 15 minute AMRAP that is going to add up. It's going to be a really fun time with teams of four. On Saturday, we have a two-part workout that's going to lead us into a max a max attempt on a clean, which for many people is going to be a really cool opportunity to test themselves, uh, and for others is going to be uh, showtime. Could be showtime. I'm really excited for that. That's going to be a cool community event. Um, so if if you haven't signed up for that, I think there might have been a few spots that popped open late last week. They might have closed up now, but it's worth a look if you're excited to jump into that last minute. Um, otherwise, you're going to catch uh, Jason and I will be up in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Uh, so just outside the Twin Cities teaching bike fit here in just a few weeks. Uh, we're going to be going every, going over everything that I talk about today in much greater detail. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about managing um, injuries with injured cyclists, which is kind of where we lead to towards the end of that course. All right. Ooh, it's been a good morning so far. Okay, okay a little sip of coffee. Today, we are talking about changing lives, not back pain, specifically with a twist on the bike fit and, and how that can really fit into that equation. As PTs, this is something that we have talked about for a very, very long time. It's, it's a drum that we beat at ice that we've been doing for a long time that we're going to continue to do as we push a fitness forward approach to physical therapy care into the future here. We see this opportunity to, to change lives, not back pain, play out really, really well with our fitness athletes. It's something that we see. We've heard countless stories of the person who was really reluctant to pick up heavy loads, and, and we teach them how to properly deadlift, or is concerned with their overhead um, capacity, putting things overhead, moving heavy weight overhead, and we get a chance to teach them those functional movements. I think in many cases, we have those fitness athletes that don't necessarily even know that they're fitness athletes yet. Like Alan always says, people love to pick up heavy things with their friends. They just don't know it yet. That's a really common story. And, and we're uniquely positioned to do that. Part of that unique position that we have completely comes down to the fact that you have to have the skill set in order to change those lifestyle factors that come with it. I, I don't want to be too broad on this, but I think in general, we're really good at changing pain. We're really good at managing symptoms. That's, that's the one thing that I think across the board is the easier part of the job in many cases. Getting somebody to fully dive in hot and heavy on adopting a new fitness regime is really tough. And if somebody comes in that you know, hey, you could be preaching the gospel, you could be telling them that joining a CrossFit gym, joining a boot camp, doing these things would be helpful. If you can't coach them up on it, find those tweaks that make them feel comfortable, strong, empowered in those movements, uh, it kind of falls on deaf ears in a sense. You need to be the person who can do that. Bike fitting becomes a really cool skill set to be able to help out in those cases. Um, and what I want to talk about today is a specific bike fit that I was able to jump into. And I think the coolest part of this story is that what it allowed for was kind of a, a split in the mindset. There, there is no, no surprise to anybody um, that at ICE, we're a very, very CrossFit focused community and we all practice. I mean, I'm a, I'm a five day a week guy myself. 
but that doesn't mean it has to be everybody's movement practice right away. If we're going to change lives, that doesn't mean that your success is going to be measured on how many CrossFit gym signups you get from the clinic. It's going to be measured on how many people you can get to adopt a truly active lifestyle that is going to put them into a position where they're excited about it, consistent with it, and gets them out of the greater medical system later in life. If you can get someone to adopt a movement practice that allows them to truly reduce their risk for those chronic diseases that we see later in life, that's the win. That is the win. Whatever they will do and be consistent with is the win. Okay. So we're going to talk about Greg for a second. Uh, this is one of my fits uh, for the sake of anonymity. His name's going to be Greg today. Greg came to see me last year uh, with a, a long-term history of low back pain. Greg is the typical Wisconsin guy. Um, he played sports at his local high school, played intramurals when he was at the UW. He graduated, got married, had kids, tried to enjoy his social life and do all kinds of things. But what he ended up doing was putting his fitness and his health in the backseat. He was referred to me by a friend of his who actually goes to a CrossFit gym here in the Madison area who I had worked with before. So when his friend referred to him to me saying, hey, you should see this guy, your back might just be weak. I thought that was about the coolest referral I've gotten yet. A, because like that's a wheelhouse type topic. And B, because the individual I worked with before that clearly heard the message. He understood what we were going for. Anyway, Greg comes to me and we start talking about his symptoms. And I'm not going to go too deep into this today because I want to explain this was a very very common case. Uh, Greg experienced kind of a three or four out of 10 low back pain. Most days came on when he was sitting at his chair at work. He could usually sit for between 20 to 30 minutes before he noticed it start to creep in. And by the time he hit about 45 minutes or so, it was really time to get up and move. The beautiful thing for Greg was that whenever he would get up and move, if he got five to 10 minutes of standing and moving around, his symptoms would drop back down to kind of like a one out of 10 or so. So as far as irritability goes, it's pretty low. And it's a pretty classic case of just a generalized low back soreness, stiffness kind of situation. When I asked him at this point about some of the things he did outside of it, talking about lifestyle behavior factors, things like that, he sleeps well. In fact, him and his wife really love keeping the house cold and dark. They're, they're really in on that train, which I felt good about. When we started to talk about his actual fitness routine, uh, that's when we started to uncover a few things. So first, his friend who worked at the, who's at the CrossFit gym here in town had tried to get him to join, looking at it totally from the perspective of, hey, if something is weak and that's how it was for me, you should come join our gym and it'll get stronger. And Greg was adamantly against it. Now, one of those kind of scenarios where he's like, hey, no, those guys are crazy. That's not for me. That's not my tribe. I'm not necessarily in on that. Okay. So I said, well, what, what else have you tried? What, what, what other things have you tried to get into? Well, be, being the typical Wisconsin guy, he loves fish fry on Friday night and a couple old fashions. And then on the weekends, he likes to get outside with his kids. That is on par. It made sense. And he liked riding bikes with his kids so much that he actually took the time and invested in a pretty nice bike. For those who have ridden bikes or bought bikes before, his bike was about $3,000. That's the kind of bike when you buy that, that it says you are committed. You are in now. This is something that you plan to use to go fast. <laughs> Greg went into the, to the bike shop, basically like Benny the Jet and his PF Flyers, looking for anything that was going to make him go faster and go farther because he was going to do it. And that bike, I tell you, it looked really good leaning against the wall in his garage for the last two years. It is the classic... I bought a treadmill and now we're hanging jackets and, and towels on it in the basement. So I asked him about that one and I said, well, why, why, why is that the case? What, what came up there? And what he described to me next was really cool. He was describing, he wanted to do it. He was excited about the bike. He was motivated and really wanted to get out there and, and pound the pavement, get some miles in. But every time he got on and rode, the position that he was in was causing him pain. In fact, it was more than the discomfort he was getting just sitting at his desk. It was that it was above and beyond the normal. And it actually left him in more pain when he got off. So his low back pain that we already kind of were starting to deduce was a flexion intolerant low back pain was being put into a flex position on the bike, or so I assumed. Now, when he started talking about not being a fan of CrossFit um, and talking about this bike, I'm clearly I'm sitting there like chomping at the bit to give him my CrossFit is for everyone. There's a space for you. 
But given his adamant nature against it, I decided, hey, let's have a conversation about this bike. So next time you come in, I want you to bring your bike and we're going to put it on the trainer and we're, and we're going to fit this thing and make sure that every piece of this works for you. Um, and for those who don't know what I'm talking about specifically, there's a ton of modifiable factors on a bike that can change certain pain points for every individual who's riding. Uh, then most of it comes at the contact points. So that's going to be the foot, which is basically kind of your cleat and uh, pedal interface. It's going to be at the seat or the saddle as we refer to it. And then also your handlebars, which is kind of the cockpit. So as Greg comes in, brings his bike the next time, and we get up on the trainer and I get him spinning. Now, <laughs> I think we've all had those patient presentations where somebody comes in and it just kind of seems like it's getting set up on a tee. And then you see one or two things and you're like, ooh, I am ready to swing. This is going to be a home run. I like what I'm seeing. You also don't like what you're seeing because you know it's going to change. Greg's on the bike. I get him spinning and he's sitting in the most ridiculous posterior pelvic tilt and long reach on this bike because that's what it kind of looks like for the pros. When they get on the bike, it's an aggressive position that they're really leaning forward in. So as we can measure, the first thing I do with every fit is I'm going to start at the foot. We're going to measure essentially where the pedal spindle, so that thing on the crank arm that turns, sits under the foot. And ideally, if we're thinking about the met heads, I want it to sit somewhere between the first and the fifth if we were looking at the frontal plane. Closer to the fifth usually does a little bit better as we've been trying to practice more recently. For Greg, this was pretty good. In fact, he was pretty much right on par with where I wanted it to be. One cleat was slightly ahead of the other, like a millimeter, and I moved that back just to make him symmetrical. He really didn't even notice much of a difference. Where we went after that was really cool. We moved up to the seat, and this is where things get really fun for the low back. What I saw with Greg was the trifecta of challenges <laughs> with the seat. His seat was too low. It, when, I, when we try to measure seat height, we're not actually measuring a distance. What we're actually measuring is the knee flexion angle at dead bottom center. So what that means is when the pedal stroke is at the very bottom and his butt is planted on the seat, what is his knee flexion angle at that point? Ideally, we want to see something between 35 to 25 degrees. 25 being more optimal and chasing more of a performance side of things, but does, again, bring you towards a more aggressive position. For Greg, this seat needed to come up. He was at about 40 degrees. I wanted to actually kind of take it to an extreme really quickly and see where we got. So I brought it up a full centimeter, which is about 10 degrees. It usually is pretty close to one to one. It's not perfect, but it's close. As soon as we made that change, he was kind of like, whoa, that is different. It didn't necessarily change the sensation of what he was thinking about for his pain, but it was a definite, definitely a noticeable difference in his position on the bike. The next thing that became really apparent when we did this is looking at the saddle fore and aft. So how forward or back that seat was. For him, that saddle was sitting pretty far back. Being in that back position meant he had to reach further to reach the, reach the brake hoods, which meant that he had to lean further forward, which meant more lumbar flexion. So an easy thing here was, was to bring the saddle forward a little bit. And when we're trying to pick the right space there, we're actually measuring that relative to a knee position. Um, but that's a little bit complex to talk through right now. The main important thing is he was really far back, so we brought it forward to get his knee in the right position, shorten his reach. After that, we started to notice the saddle. This is the really interesting piece. Was two degrees positive, which means the nose was slightly pointed up. That slight point up, and I mean two degrees. We're not talking about the goniometer where there's a pretty large margin of error. We're talking about an electric level, something that's going to be pretty precise. That two degrees at the seat, tipping up, dumped him into a little bit of a posterior tilt that when spread across his entire spine created a much larger flexion moment. So same idea of transitioning on a really aggressive change here. I brought it down to negative two, which is pretty much the end for where we want to go on a road bike. When I got into that position, it brought his hips forward into a little bit of an anterior tilt. Again, two degrees down low, expanded and expressed over the length of the entire spine creates a very drastically different position at the shoulders and the low back. So by tipping him forward, we already saw a pretty significant change there. This is when Greg started to get that, whoa, that's different. <laughs> I could ride that. that. That feels good. <laughs> like that's, That is drastically different. There was one step that we went a little bit further. At this point, he was already in. He was already bought in at this point just by making a few changes to his seat. When we got to the brakes, or the brakes being on the handlebars, where the hoods sit, 
I was actually thinking about where he was reaching out to, and I wanted to accommodate him even a little bit more. And by accommodate, I mean make the position more comfortable, so almost kind of cheating some. Um, consider someone else like put on lifters to do their air squats. <laughs> it's a very similar concept. Um, we're accommodating his reach, so I actually talked to him about getting a shorter stem. And what that did was it took him from an angle that was really reached out and brought his arms down closer to a 90 degree angle between his thorax and his upper arm. Um, what that does for us is it kind of starts to normalize that position and get him a little more upright, get him into less lumbar flexion so that he can tolerate the position longer. Now, this is this is where this, this conversation just got so much, so much more fun, is because A, I could have in the eval pounded on the drum that said, hey, do what I do. Come join the CrossFit gym. Or you can take the opportunity that somebody gives you where they show a little bit of excitement about a movement practice. And you could say, hey, let's double down on that. Let's use that first. Because the hardest thing to find is motivation for most people. For Greg, taking this time to adjust his bike <laughs> when he was certain that the guy at the bike shop gave him the right size, which is a different thing entirely, Taking the time to adjust this to make it specific to him got him out on the road right away. His homework from me on our second visit was, dude, I need you to go for a good 30-minute ride right away. I need you to get out and go farther than you've gone before, and I want to know what happens to your pain levels. It may go up some because we know where you're at. However, it also might, it might not be exactly where you thought it was. And as I would have really hoped with this bike fit and what we see super often was it was a drastic change. His first 30-minute ride – he did awesome. He went out and crushed like seven miles, which for him was a really, really good clip. And he felt great about it. He actually had like a kind of a low grade one to two out of 10 soreness when he got done, but that's less than he had sitting at work in his work chair. So just those few changes that we took in one visit, which really aren't that complex. We could teach you in a weekend and you can go home on Monday, ready to go at that. Those changes put him in a position to adopt this movement practice. I saw Greg about two months later um, at the Memorial Union Terrace downtown in Madison. If anybody here comes to the CrossFit Games, you definitely got to check that out this year while it's here for the last year because that is a classic Wisconsin establishment. Um, and I ran into Greg and he looked great. This is two months after our visit. He had lost about 15 pounds. He actually joined a cycling group because there's one right down the block from me here that I kind of, uh, there's a coaching group that I told him you should go check him out. I ended up going on rides every weekend with him. He takes his kids off for rides during the week. He's feeling better about where he's at. And he said he's even considering joining his friend going to the CrossFit gym. Having the skill set when Greg walked in the door to take something he was excited about and be able to be the person who took him on the journey to make that accessible to him, to reduce his pain so he could go further, to get him to a point where we were minimizing his symptoms to maximize his fitness could have potentially changed the way Greg's life went forward. He had tried before, and with what he had now, he was able to go forward. I don't know about you, but in, in that, for me, just lights me up inside. That is, that's one of those things, it's like, it's that perfect drive on the golf course that leaves you thinking, this is exactly why I do it. I am back for this right here. And that is what happened with Greg. And that's something that everybody here can do in any capacity. The important thing to come bring this all back full circle, when we're talking about changing lives, not back pain, go for the thing that is going to give your patient the most consistency and the most effect for that person. That might not always be what you want it to be. It might not always be our movement practice, but whatever it is that they can commit to and the community they can get into, that's where the change is going to show up. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Drop any questions you have. Thanks for your time.